this is a large topic, so I'll give kind of a broad overview of what we know and where we should be headed as a field. Now, I'll just go briefly over background, some definitions that I think are important and are sometimes framed different than the operational ways in which we use them, how to think about cancer disparities in our conclusion. So overall, we know within the United States, there is a large burden in terms of prostate cancer affecting all men within the United States. We know for African-American men that it represents from a prostate cancer standpoint, a disproportionate burden relative to the general population. For African-American men within the United States, this year, prostate cancer will account for about 37 of all new cancer diagnoses, as well as 17% of all cancer deaths for African-American alone, African-American men alone within the United States. Now we know over time, thankfully with advances in care and treatments, the burden of prostate cancer death has decreased for everyone. But we know that that decrease has not been uh, the same magnitude for all within the United States. We know for African-American men, there continues to be a higher rate of death from prostate cancer, and that this observation is multifactorial. We've seen many documented reports and publications about decreased rates of screening, earlier onset of disease, diagnosis and treatment at a later stage, and then even differences in the quality of care and guideline concordant care that's being provided. Now, before we dive any deeper, I just want to clarify a few definitions just to make sure that we understand how they are defined versus how they're used commonly. Disparities are strictly just a difference in proportions or frequencies. It's differences between populations or groups when we're making comparisons. Now, in this context, we're talking about racial disparities for prostate cancer survival. You can have disparities between people that like Coke and Pepsi, between those that like that are left-handed and right-handed. It is only a difference between the groups. But we need to understand in this context why these things are happening and why they persist despite all of the documenta documentation that we've had over the last three, four decades. Now, healthcare disparities, specifically those happening within this context, are often framed as black and white comparisons without real insight into the other groups that are also affected by prostate cancer. And often in the literature, these are kind of, I would say, comprised or kind of described in three main food groups, if you will, access, treatment, and survival. But we realize that the disparities, why they persist, are more complicated than those three things alone, and that each of these outcomes that we monitor are all reliant on the context in which they exist within the healthcare system. Now, context is key, and that context has many different faces and many different forms. That's healthcare as we understand it, seeing your doctor in the clinic, talking about treatments and diagnosis. That's health policy. That's historical impact of policies such as housing, residential zoning. That's your geographic location, where you're receiving care. That's the laws, regulations, and barriers within your city, your state, or even at the federal le level that may be impacting people in different ways that can perpetuate disparity. So context is key. And that's an area where we are slowly acknowledging that more effort is needed and more investigation is happening. Now, social determinants of health have always been a buzzword. People have mentioned these, but typically have framed it as patient level or your education, your income level, your insurance. But both the World Health Organization and the CDC actually frame these as conditions where people live, learn, work, and play. So it's not just patient level characteristics. It's truly the environment in which people live. Part of that environment is your neighborhood, your city, your state, but part of that environment is also where you're receiving care. Changing that framework of how we understand disparities and even how we define social determinants of health is integral for us to understand how to address them appropriately. So this moves me to talking about a conceptual framework or a different way for us to think about prostate cancer disparities than we have over the last 30 to 40 years. Now, I'm always critical of my own field, so I have to apologize up front. But when we talk about disparities, if you look through the literature, particularly those done within the field of urology, it is primarily framed on patient level factors. So that's, again, patient's insurance, patient's clinical risk, 
patients' knowledge and attitudes about prostate cancer, their income, their education level. And a lot of this is driven by what data is generally available. Only over the last few years, the last decade or so, have we started to understand that limiting such uh, investigations to just race alone or insurance or even rural versus, rural versus urban limits what we can understand about the problem and how to address it. Even looking at a single cancer without context of where this exists, focus so much on the individual that we only understand what's going on for that person. Nothing about the healthcare system or organization. So when we move to interventions or changing the problems and disparities that we're seeing, our data is not structured in a way to inform or even understand more than just what we are observing at the patient level and what's commonly understood based on registry data. Now, my approach, what I've learned from others who are doing amazing work within UCSF and partnerships with our department is that there is a more comprehensive approach to understanding disparities and why they exist within this environment, within this ecosystem of healthcare. That is not only looking at the patient level factors, but understanding are there differences at the provider level, at the organization level within the healthcare system? And then are there things outside of healthcare, outside of the patient's control that are also impacting what we're finding, these disparities? Some ways that people have done this is started to slowly move from just the individual alone to again, focusing on, okay, how are systems different? How is the care being provided in one healthcare system different than what's being provided at UCSF, for example? And then how are small areas, either a healthcare system by itself or a geographic region, improving outcomes, reducing healthcare disparities compared to other areas where these outcomes and disparities may continue to persist? Now, this more comprehensive approach requires us to leverage data that is not commonly available. That allows us to get a different uh, viewpoint on what's going on. That means, as has been done within UCSF and through other partnerships, leveraging real world data to understand, okay, how, are, how is care different at UCSF versus another site? How is care within California different than another state? This helps us understand how is healthcare different at UCSF versus care at Kaiser versus uh, Sutter. Those are the areas and the small bubbles that we need to understand how these differences are happening that allow us to move from just description to, okay, how can we intervene if it, things are working well at one location, how can we intervene to improve them at another? In turn, when we move just from data alone to a broader context, which we're doing now, this allows for more opportunities for insight, knowledge, and partnership with patients, with patient advocates, with the community to understand what barriers we are not even seeing in our blind spot as providers as we focus on the cancer and appropriate treatment. So in conclusion, I always like to say we know some, but we don't know enough. We know that disparities exist. We know that they've continued to exist for decades, but we need further input. And these are from partnerships and from input from patients, advocates, and community groups obviously within the community and outside of our academic bubbles to help us understand and guide the research, to help us improve prostate cancer outcomes and treatment and reduce the disparities that we've been seeing this entire time. So again, these answers will come not just from the urologist seeing prostate cancer like myself, but a discussion between us providing care and the patients who are experiencing this firsthand and their family members who are going through this with the patients as well. Thank you.